Cancer, this is all about you. This is your weekly oracle and tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries. We're gonna get into the oracle card spread right here, right now. Remember, there's always a link below to an extended video with a full extended tarot card spread as well as a romance reading. So if you're interested, that link is below. This is for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury. Wherever Cancer influences your natal chart, you can apply these energies for the next seven to 10 days. Cancer, 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 Cancer. Cancer. Message for Cancer. That's really interesting. So your crowning energy is you. The scarab beetle, we've had this conversation before. I feel, I feel like we've had this conversation before, but the scarab beetle was the Egyptian animal symbol for Cancerians. It was not originally the crab, though you can kind of see how it kind of morphed into the crab six legs, the hard shell, etc. But the scarab beetle is something quite, quite special in Egyptian, um, in Egyptian faith. Was rebirth, resurrection, life, transformation. Um, could be good fortune and good luck. Magic works through you. What this means, crowning your reading, and the fact that it is symbolic of our sign is that you are transforming yourself. You are literally creating your own magic. You are the source of the magic. You are the source of the new life. And this, it's, it's not just what you're working on, a decision that you made. It's the time. This is our transformation. This is the period of, it's the energy. It's almost like the cosmos is aligned as well. And it's working through us. So it's interesting as a Cancerian, if you have recently experienced this, tell me. I feel like, especially Cancer sun signs, Cancer risings are getting a lot of credit, but I don't think Cancer sun signs are. Um, or Cancer moon signs, I feel like. A lot of times <laughs> there's like, there's almost like, um, God, there's so much to that, but, but it's, this is what I'm going to say as crazy as it sounds that cancerians are actually building the new universe, that we are the ones that are architecting the future that, that are step by step, brick by brick or design by design, sort of somehow universally creating, transforming the energies to create, recreate not only ourselves, but through ourselves, pushing and pulling everybody else. And the reason I said it about the rising signs is like, it's almost, as a Cancerian, if you're experiencing, you, you, this is what you would experience. What you would experience is feeling like everybody else around you is flourishing. And we always get, you know, the dung thrown at us. This is the dung beetle. We always get the dung thrown at us that, oh, you're whining. Stop whining. Cancers are whiny. Um, but most of the time we're right. Most of the time we're right. And it's because we are so awesome at transferring energy, literally being a conduit for energy to literally reshape people, places, and energy around us. But we're the conduit. So A, we don't get seen, we don't get recognized, we don't get noticed, and it's almost like sometimes there's this feeling, in, in, at least from my experience, that people don't even know it's coming from me. I'm totally invisible, and yet everything I can see that I've been thinking or feeling or wanting or desiring, it all starts to be, be shown in everybody else. But in a way, I'm the one that gets left out or left behind. 
So this is this energy, this, this acknowledgement of your energy now coming back around and transforming you as well in that we don't have to sit back and wait anymore and watch everybody else really conduct our and um really be the result of the end result of our energy and where we put our energy and and transforming their lives and helping others and all of those things that are so very cancerian and sort of recognizing our self-worth by how valuable we can contribute you we can make other people like how can we bring out the best in them you know it's like it's always sort of our mantle of pride is to build exceptional people and to help others and, and to do other, to see everything outside of us grow. But this is energy coming back around. And this is, yes, magic is working through us. We're transforming people. We're healing people. But because this is at the crowning, and in the, at the crown position, the crowning, at the crowning position, I'm sorry for my words, because this is at the, crowning position of the reading this is affecting us so we're actually transforming ourselves this week and this is i guess in the most blatant 3d interpretation um new life new life a new life coming for us a rebirth a transformation a new chance at life abundance and also good luck right life eternal like that heavenly almost like the judgment card in the tarot deck which i would equate this to um being chosen being selected having good fortune but you know yeah yeah like like that like all of those things are starting to take over and happen to us and i feel like it's because they're we're now receiving the back end of that energy loop affecting and influencing and helping and building others and now it's all sort of transmuting us ourselves it's affecting us this is the crowning energy a new chance a new life you can't ignore the fact that this is 5 2 52 which adds up to seven the number of creation seven days and seven nights this is the number of creation and something manifesting and coming into being and i think it's actually us that's coming into being Whew, wow cancers you see clearly now so this is wisdom having learned lessons having understood having built this is very aquarian energy so something is coming clear to you over the next seven days is coming becoming very apparent and you almost seeing through the darkness you're taking aim you're pointing you're um able to make very clear decisions maybe emotionally objective decisions which is not easy for us but it's like we've gotten to a point where we're now capable of doing it and that's why I think our energy is being so well applied toward us ourselves. This is also energy of, you know, sort of, it might be pushing energy back at us, it, it, which is good, good for us because we tend to give too much of our energy away. But um, yeah, this is aha, understanding and awakening. I would not be surprised if a lot of you have been seeing 1111 a great many times. This is shared knowledge, wisdom, wisdom exchange, counsel being given. Um, but this is also a communication from spirit itself, from the actual, from the spirit world itself. Um, finally having that divine direction that points us where we need to go. Use your mind wisely this is a really beautiful card because this is when pigs fly. I really believe that we were up against the impossible, but somehow figured out a way to achieve it. So this is my when pigs fly card because it's achieving the impossible. That's what it means. You've achieved the impossible. It could very well be that somebody has spotted you and is seeing you clearly, finally realizing, remember what I said in the crowning energy, um, of the beginning of this reading is somebody's finally realizing you finally seeing you and something that almost seemed impossible is finally happening and no I don't think 
that you'll expect it. The truth is I think that you've already seen beyond it. You probably aren't even watching right now this direction, but that's okay because it's coming back around. And inevitably, like ultimately, we're the ones that made it happen, you know, but it's so long gone. I, I almost feel like we've given up on it already. So that's why we don't even remember you know, what this opportunity is, but this is definitely some, something manifesting. Um, and I feel like it, ha it comes in the form of recognition being, being manifested that was not recognized before. This is achieving the impossible, sort of breaking through that barrier between the 3D and the 5D of, of manifesting what seemed to be ridiculous. This and that are true. Playful energy, jump for joy. That's what I heard in my head. Um, this is two different extremes, uh, trying to find a way to deal with two different extremes. Uh, I don't really love the energy of this card because it is about being stuck in the middle. It is that gray area, but it also is a solution to the gray area, which is play, just have fun. Right now, let it go. Let go and just like the dolphin in this card, jump in the shallows. Why? Because maybe that's all we have right now. Maybe that's the solution to the problem. And that is the solution to the problem is just be in this current moment. You know, um, it's all, but it's also connecting the this and the that. It's that abstract understanding of not just right or wrong, but like almost connecting two different worlds and finding that connectivity place. So maybe from the world of failure to the world of success, we found the bridge, but this is definitely just um, jump and play, have fun. Um, trying to filter out these messages, these are really, I can feel it just like all Cancerians. I, I can feel it. I know it as a feeling, but it's hard for me to find the words to articulate. Watch your words. As I'm saying it, look what the card, look what cards come out. I feel like I'm being very particular because I don't want to lead anybody astray. I don't want to make, say anything that will make anybody jump to conclusions that will get them upset. And maybe I just have to abandon that. This is the energy of nine. So something is coming to a conclusion. Um, watch your words. Always, and this is the central energy. It sits at the center of our energy. I feel like this is a week for listening and watching. I also feel like this could be a week where we feel like we're getting criticized, but more or less Cancerian. And it's interesting. I think Pisces got this energy due. So something could be going on with the water signs. I don't know if this showed up with Scorpio though, but this is definitely the energy of, are you saying what you need to say or are you saying what people want you to say? And I think that this week is almost like we've been very, very cautious or particular about how we say things or how we talk, um, but we haven't wanted to. There is this impulse inside of us to scream and shout and rip somebody, somebody's you know what, you know, rip somebody a you know what, like rip, rip somebody a new hole, right? Somebody is listening to what we say and they're looking, I'm telling you right now, they are looking to use that to undermine us. They're looking, they're looking for a reason to not give us, they're looking for a reason to not give us what we deserve. They're looking for a reason. Dream the world into being some sort of ghost or shadow from the past, still sort of haunting or creeping. I can feel it. There's this energy of, of some sort of shadow looming. Even though we're future focused, we want to play, we want to have fun. There's some sort of shadow underneath of something that doesn't want to let us go. And the reason it doesn't want to let us go is because it's feeding off of our life force. It's feeding off of our, um, it's feeding off of our energy, like we're its food. So of course it doesn't want to let us go. And even if that means destroying us and making us lame, it would want to hold us back because hello, it needs us to feed off of its life force and how that translates into like real world 
scenarios could be that there are these issues that have been looming in your life for a while and no matter what you've done to try to get rid of them no matter what you've done to try to solve them somehow they vampirically just like latch onto you and keep hooking onto you and they don't want to let you go it's got nothing to do you don't deserve this this is a non-deserving thing but this is definitely sort of like how do we shake this ghost that's literally attached itself to us type of energy Ooh, this got dark real quick. But once again, I think this relates back to the scarab beetle because the scarab beetle is about death and transformation. So it's about really just the only way to like, it's almost like the only way to move on to your new life is to completely and totally abandon your old one. Like, lit, I, that's 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 literally what it is if we want to lose these ghosts we literally have to die ourselves not literally but we have to go through a sort of death that just completely and totally lets go of everything that we are so that we can regenerate and transform and become something completely and totally new so it's almost like in some way a self-sacrifice um, but at, like a literal self-sacrifice in that we're giving over that part of ourselves that has all these attachments latched onto it and we're starting completely clean. Now, how does that play out? Does that mean that we're like going to fake our own deaths? No, that's kind of silly. Um, I don't know if some of you are thinking of that, but don't leave that in the comments. <laughs> like, like, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, like this would be that energy of, I got to get rid of these people in my life. Old friends are gone. Um, this is the time to move. This is the time. This is the time. Even if I'm not sure of myself, I've got to unlatch my attachment to this place. I've got to unlatch my attachment to this people. Cancerians don't unlatch easily. And I think that that's why these ghosts love us so much because they know that we usually never give up. And they're sort of depending on that character trait of ours is to hold on so that they could they could keep us there. Because remember, um, yeah, it's like it's like they need something to latch onto, and we make it very easy because we don't we don't move around, we don't we don't shed that part that they're attached to, right? That now is the time. This transformation period with this crowning energy now is the time to shed. Now is the time to molt, if you will, using the crab as an example. Now is that time to cast it out and just let it go. And as much as you kind of want to hold on or are scared to hold on, that fear is nothing compared to what you're facing if you don't. Um, Spirit has your back. Oh, I love this reading. This is so beautiful. Um, Cancerians, now is the time. This card is showing up. This is my Capricornian energy, our opposing sign. But it's karma and it's rules and it's and it's basically saying now is the time to fly now is the time to jump karma has come around and it's asking us to do it do we want to ignore karma no and look at two plus three is five this is the time for change and i think this change is something that we've earned because capricorn always makes you earn stuff right oh it always a hundred percent like that's that's capricornian energy but this is the energy of this is earned you know, we're getting that chance. The ship has come back in. Why would we not jump again? We have to. I think this is, this to me, this card is coming through as timing. It could also be military experience, something to do with government, a judgment coming through, some sort of lawsuit sort of sizing up in your favor. Yes, absolutely. And spirit, this card indicates the spirits had your back for quite some time and that behind the scenes, it's been working in your favor. And now the judgment is coming down, breaking through, and it's literally exonerating you, either exonerating you or repaying you or um, spotlighting you. Finally, you, you are being recognized. And now we have, we take a leap of faith. And I swear to God, this card, this card was, the energy of this card was looming over this whole reading of now is the time. And I feel like Gemini, did Gemini have this energy? No, Gemini had that energy of launching. Um, this is definitely, we, this is us having to have faith. This is, this is us because I feel like this is the murkiness. This is the in-between. This is what we feel around us. 
And I think it's because we're not used to this feeling. This is an un this is an unfamiliar feeling because it's one that we always sort of ignore or put off. Like we we don't want to feel this success coming to us, right? We love it to watch it in others, but there's the, there's the safety in watching other people grow because you don't have to actually grow yourself. Well, now is the time when you're being called. You've got to let the past go. You've got to put the past behind you. And I'm, I'm saying really make that choice. It's been in the back of your mind. Like this is, this is actually when you would um, cut those ties cut those ties to that job. Why? Because there is this energy, like I said, this looming energy of something that wants to latch onto you. And it's an energy that is a sad energy. It's an energy that is, um, that wants to keep feeding on you, your, your, your sadness, your depression, your, it just wants to keep feeding on you, this energy. And spirit is saying that's because you have to move on. Like it's almost like you're living in a graveyard, Cancerian. You've stayed here and you don't belong here. You're not among the dead, but the dead are happy to have you because you keep giving them their, their, your, their energy, right? It's like now is the time. You have got to take this leap. And I don't, what I'm saying is I don't think it feels completely comfortable for you, right? I don't. It doesn't feel comfortable. This kind of air energy where you're broadening and expanding and awakening, it doesn't feel comfortable at all, especially for us because the air is that foggy place. We don't understand it. There's not enough substance to it. We love earth, right? Right? Or we love more water to wash away. But but air, we like what is air? We in other words, we just have to take the sleep of faith. We just have to make the decision to do it. And I, you know, whether that could be, I don't know if it's switching schools or if it's um, joining the military or if it's leading or leaving a relationship, this is something, it's almost like when I was talking about it, you knew what I was talking about. That's the thing that came into your head when, when I said, it's time to leave it behind. It's time to go. Whether it's an actual location or a person or a job, you knew it in your head. That's the thought that came in your head. Trust it because that's that internal voice working through you. Take a leap of faith. And remember what grasshopper is. Grasshopper's good luck. You have two symbols of good luck supporting you as well as a card that says, no, spirit has got you here. You can trust this. This is the time. There's been a lot of synchronicities about something hasn't there. You need to trust, you need to follow it. You need to trust in the synchronicities. Let me get your grounding energy, Cancers. Oh, that came right out too. <laughs> oh my God. I'm actually gonna flip the camera angle around. Hold on. Let me flip the camera angle around. Okay, let's go over your grounding and we're our grounding energy now. Take time out. But this is showing up, why? This is protective energy. This is mama bear energy. This is, somebody is protecting you. Somebody is guiding you. This is from the other side of the spirit world. I honestly feel like this, because this is nine energy too. Um, eight, nine, 10, 11. This is the energy of awakening and transformation, just like this is. Um, nine, where else do we get nine? Watch your words. It's almost like somebody is holding you back or protecting. No, no, no. Whatever is holding you back may feel like it's trying to protect you. It may feel like it's trying to protect you. Yeah, it does. This is an energy of, it may feel like, you know, the naysaying or the defense. Wait, stop. Take time out and be peace. Okay, so this is it. That's the that's the lack of resistance. Cancerians, it's the energy's coming back around. It's gonna hit you in your back. You're gonna absorb it through your back and it's gonna push through you. Finally, your energy is gonna push you forward. Bottom line, that's that's the crowning energy. The central energy is watch your words. Um or necessarily watch other people's judgments or in other words, careful to tell you tell. That is your spell. What are you casting? 
What are you saying? What are your words over the next seven days? Like, what are you saying about yourself and about your world? Watch your words because your words are casting magic and you're casting it on yourself. There is energy here. This grounding energy is, this is Libra energy. It's protective energy. This is balance. This is love. Somebody is protecting you because they love you. And I really do feel like this is from the other side, the, uh, the spirit world. This is an energy of mama or grandmother energy coming in, peace being delivered, happiness, um, rebalance, like I said, love. You are really significantly loved, maybe from some sort of ancestor in your past. They are protecting you. This is that energy of you are absolutely 100%. Two plus one is three. This is the divine trinity. You are not alone. You are not alone, Cancerian. And I feel like a lot of times we feel like we are. We're not. We're not. Somebody has actually been listening to your words. That could be the ghost energy that's coming up. Somebody somebody that's, that's there with you all the time listening to what you say. And sort of, sort of, like, oh boy. It's almost like this, this energy is trying to protect you from the really bad negative ramifications that could be happening. But this is definitely, in other words, once you detach from these sort of darker energies, like when, once you allow yourself to literally have that part of you die and move forward to this new life because that's really the overall message isn't it is this is the time to start your new life cancer that's what that's what this message is this is the time to be the new you to 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 move on to that next stage it's almost like a saturnian return right even if it isn't that's what it feels like that's the energy for all of us and trust in it because you are protected. Somebody has always got your back. And it's not just spirit itself, though spirit itself is present. It is this energy of this, this ancestor, some sort of spirit that has loved you, I think really in the 3D. Maybe they've never even known you, but there's some sort of ancestral attachment. This is mama bear energy. It's extremely protective of you. What does this mean? Have they been blocking you? Maybe sometimes they were the dark energy. I don't know. That's really interesting of, of blocking you. But that would have been the time when you weren't supposed to move on. Now this energy is coming through of we've got you. Spirit has your back. It's time to leap. All the other times that I've held you back. And frustrated you and unfortunately made you doubt yourself and feel bad about yourself not feel good about yourself and think that you're a loser that everybody wants to leave behind I'm actually really sorry that that's the message that's what I taught you because that's not what I meant to teach you I meant to sort of um, just be your timer I meant to 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 I meant to time you. I meant to, I meant to make sure that you did what you needed to do at the right timing increments. But it's almost like you received the wrong message, right? You received, I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy. Nobody loves me. Nobody recognizes me. Everybody overlooks me. But instead, I was just trying to protect you. And now it's like that mess, that's finally become clear to me. That's finally become clear to me. That I've all my all my attempts at protecting have actually given you the message that you're not competent or that you're not loved. And that's not the case. So here I am delivering a whole shit ton of good luck and happiness and abundance. And I'm trying to tell you, move on, move away from whatever it is that you have been stuck in because you thought you had to settle because that's all you were worth. Now is the time to move on, move on from it because I've got you. Lead me, I'll be there for you, you direct me. I, I want you to know that you're protected, but I don't want that protection to be a hindrance. I don't want that protection to be a cage. I, I hate what it's done to you. And so now I'm coming to break through the cage. I'm helping you. You know, it's almost like this energy that was, try, that was dragging you down and, and shadowing you. Oh, you know, all through most of the reading, this was a long reading. 
it, it felt negative, right? It felt like, but it was actually just thinking it was protecting you. And now it's like, it's finally realized, I, holy shit, I wasn't protecting cancer. I was actually harming them. That's not what I want to do. So this is them making peace with you. This is them saying, sorry. And this is them saying, I'm helping you. I'm going to help you. You have to do this. You have to take this leap. I've got it. I've got you. Ooh, um, this is quite a powerful reading. I'm going to keep going with tarot. Um, I hope you guys join. We'll also do the romance reading over there too. I know this has been a long reading, but I think that it's been worth it. Cancers, I'll see you in the extended.